So, okay. Tonight, we are continuing to look at Ephesians 4. Nick talked about this two weeks ago, and basically we're talking about putting on the new you. So, when someone becomes a Christian, something extremely significant happens to them. The Bible says that when you become a Christian, you take off the old you and you put on the new you. And so, tonight, we're going to talk about what that means for anger and our speech. But before we start talking about that, let's pray. Anyone who wants to can go ahead and pray for us, and I'll be the last one. Yeah, God, I pray for the teaching tonight, and that you really speak through Wesley, and that uh, if anybody doesn't understand anything going on uh, in the teaching, that they ask some of the leaders. Pray for, for this tonight. Yeah. We know that people's anger and their words can cause a lot of damage in relationships, mm -hmm. and you don't want that, so thanks that you've spoken on this subject. Uh, we all need to hear this stuff, so I pray you help us to listen well and respond to you. Mm -hmm. I think it's awesome, God, that not only do you want to forgive us for everything and have a relationship with us, and give us eternal life with you. You also care about our lives now, like before we go to heaven and be with you forever. Um, I think that's awesome that you want to help us learn how to live really cool lives and have awesome relationships. So I pray you'd be showing us stuff tonight that we can actually put into practice in the next few days and weeks um, in trying to be more like the new us and less like the old us. Amen. Amen. All right, so like I was saying, when someone becomes a Christian, they take off the old self and put on the new self. Fundamentally, what it means to become a Christian is you recognize that God has this standard of goodness that's way beyond anything that you could ever hope to be. But you can still have a relationship with him, not because of anything you've done, but because he, through Jesus, is willing to forgive you for everything that you've ever done wrong. And the Bible puts it this way in 2 Corinthians. It says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. So here's kind of what happened. This is you. And you obviously have some problems, right? <laughs> uh, your problem is sin. You make mistakes, you're not perfect, you do things that are wrong, you hurt yourself, you hurt other people. That's what the Bible calls sin. And that means you're not right with God, because God is perfect. But, this is Jesus, and he's obviously perfect. You can just tell by the way he's cuddling with that little lamb, that he is right with God. And so, even though Jesus never sinned, he decided to become our offering for sin. So essentially what happens is, watch this. To be like trade places. So instead of being separated from God and stuck in our sin, we actually get to be where Jesus is, right with God. And that's what it means to be a Christian. And when you believe this message about Jesus, you become a new creation. So, let's talk about some of the things we've been looking at through this book of Ephesians already, about all the blessings someone has in Christ when they're this new creation. The new you. You are forgiven forever. That means anything you've ever done wrong, ever will do wrong, or are doing wrong right now, is totally forgiven. God won't hold it against you. You're adopted by God. This is really cool. It means that you are actually his child. You're part of his family. You have access to God's power for real change in your life. You get to live forever in heaven with God and with other believers. You have God's spirit living inside of you, with you all the time. And you're joined to Christ and other people who believe in him. All this stuff is automatically true of someone who believes in Jesus. And it will never change. This will never go away. But, oh, yeah. It's kind of like this movie, which I've never seen, that Sam told me about. <laughs> Princess Diaries or something. So it's this girl who is kind of a nerd and 
has frizzy hair. But it turns out her true identity is that she's a princess, and so she like takes off those old like schoolgirl frizzy hair image stuff and puts on fancy tiaras and dresses and is like, this is who I am now. That's kind of what we're doing. And it's kind of like the caterpillar turning into a beautiful butterfly. Where, you know, it's it's leaving that old life of crawling around and having bees chop its head off with their saw it's really traumatic. And it's becoming a butterfly and happy and like I don't know, on folders and trapper keepers. <laughs> kind of like the transformation we're talking about. But in order to grow in our new selves, in our spiritual lives, we need to know and believe the truths about our new self. And then also actively lay aside the old self and put on the new self. So the main difference between the old and the new selves is this, that in Christ, we turn from a life lived for ourselves to a life dedicated to loving God and loving other people. That's, if you had to boil it all down to one thing, that would be it. So tonight we're going to look specifically at what this means for things like our anger and the way we use our speech. All right, so our passage begins with, Be angry, and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not give the devil an opportunity. Okay, first thing I want you guys to realize is, this is saying anger is not forbidden. Interesting. You know, anger is one of those things that it can be used the right way. But it's kind of dangerous because you can easily slip into sinful anger because it says be angry and yet don't sin you'll never like read that about like compassion you know be compassionate but don't sin you know be forgiving but don't sin right so anger is a special thing where it's not always wrong but it's really easy to kind of get in over our heads and have it be something that's actually bad <coughs> and when we give when we when we are angry in the the wrong way, the sinful way, we give the devil, Satan, God's enemy, an opportunity to tear us down, to tear the people around us down. So let's think about how anger differs with the old self and then with the new self. In the old self, all that matters is how I feel. I don't care where I am. I don't care who's around me. I don't care what we're doing. I'm pissed, and I'm going to let people know it, right? Also, I can't really control my anger. It's just an emotion that happens inside of me, and it's like, Bleh! you know, it just comes out. There's no, like, I'm not in control of myself. I'm angry, and so I'm just, like, storming around fuming, right? <coughs> Sound familiar? Yes. That's me. <laughs> this guy, guys, is stuck in the old self with regard to anger. You know, it's like this chemical goes off and he turns green and huge and smashes people's cars and stuff. That's that. That's the old self. We want to we want to move away from this. In the new self, how I affect other people is more important than how I feel. And I'm willing to control myself. You know, in the new self we realize relationships are really important, but they're also really fragile. And, you know, maybe you've experienced, like, at home or with friends, anger, outbursts, and you know how damaging that can be to your relationships. You know how that can alienate people from each other. And so just hurling these, like, rage attacks on people is not worth the damage that it does to our friendships. And in Christ... I recognize that, and I'm willing to, like, you know, I might be feeling this way right now, but I don't want to risk my relationship with this person, so I'm just going to, like, control myself and not let my emotions get the best of me. Also, in the new self, my identity is secure in Christ. So I can think clearly during a conflict. You know, think of how many times our angry outbursts are really a result of insecurity, where... I feel like, oh, who do you think you are? You can't talk to me that way. 
bleh, and I'm like so insecure and hurt that it comes out as like this angry backlash of the person. In Christ, I realize that my identity is not based on how people view me, or even what they say to me, or what they think of me. My identity is based in all those things that we've looked at before about what God says is true of me. And so I don't need to just like jump and defend myself and defend my honor as soon as someone maybe like says something insulting or does something that pisses me off. And in the new self, I get upset about the right things. This is kind of how we said anger is not always bad. Sometimes you should get angry. There are plenty of things in this world that should piss you off. Um, but in the old self, anger is used to intimidate and manipulate others to get my way. So this might be blowing up like a toddler throwing a tantrum to get their way. If you have like little brothers and sisters, you know what this is like. Where I'm just going to throw a hissy fit until you do what I want. I actually have some embarrassing footage that I'm going to share with you of my own tantrum <laughs> that I threw. And my mom and Leslie are so duped by it, and they're like trying to like appease me, but all I want is to like whine. So let me pull this up real quick. So there's Leslie, happy on the swing set. <laughs> and I'm a wine brat. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Steph? What's the magic word? Me! <laughs> 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 they they fell for it. <laughs> and yet, it's not good enough. Hi, <laughs> Mom. Wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Not the way it's supposed to be. 